Hello, YouTube. By now, I'll bet you know what time it is. But there's a twist. Since I'm not in school anymore, I don't really need to use my pencil case all that much. I mainly use it as storage, and the writing instruments that I use at home sit on my desk in a cup, which you see here. At home, I don't write all that much, except for the occasional journal entry or to-do list. At work, I take notes all the time, but they issue us Pilot G2s and Pilot Acroballs, which are great to use, so I don't really need to supply my own writing instruments there. As a result, this might be the last in the best of the pencil case series. Since there's not really much that's going to be changing, there's not really any need to do another video. Unless you guys would like to see one, of course. Either way, let's get to what I use on a day-to-day -day basis at home. First up, we've got a couple of those Pilot Acroballs I talked about before. These are extremely smooth writing ballpoint pens, and these are pretty much Pilot's answer to the Uniball Jetstream, which I'm sure you guys are familiar with. If you're not, I would recommend either one of these. I like the Acroball because of its textured grip section. This is probably the best rubber grip on any ballpoint pen or mechanical pencil that I've ever seen. It's smooth, but not so smooth that it'll slip, but it's not so grippy that it's distracting. It's not very cushioned either, it's kind of solid. That's one in blue, and then here's a black one. And next we've got the classic Big Crystal Bold. This one's 1.6 millimeters and it's in purple. I like using purple for certain calendar notes and things to kind of emphasize stuff. It's more pleasing to the eye than red. And here is the Pentel Energel. I'm sure I've talked about this before, but this one, even though it's a cap design, uh, the grip section is still pretty good. Sometimes the grips on cap design sort of uh, suffer because they have to be thin to fit under the cap. But this is a pretty good pen as well. It's a lot more like a rollerball than it is a gel pen. The ink is a lot more liquidy than it is, for example, in a Pilot G2. Here's another gel pen, the Uni Signal 307. The 307 goes on in sort of a matte finish. It's not the glossy finish that you typically get in signal pens or in gel pens in general. It's got this fake carbon fiber look that actually is pretty presentable. And here for the only pencil in the group, well the only wooden pencil anyway, this is the Mitsubishi 9850 in HB. It's only available in HB. It's the uh, sort of office grade pencil by Mitsubishi but it's still quite good compared to the offer spreading pencils that are sold in big box stores today. This is one of the few Mitsubishi pencils with erasers on the back. Quite good quality. Next up we got a couple of Sharpies. I like using Sharpies for general writing on post-it notes because post-it notes for some reason don't really take liquid ink very well. It's just very difficult to write on them with fountain pens or with rollerball pens. So I use a Sharpie fine point marker for that. This is the extra, well the ultra fine. And then you have the classic, you know, well-worn Sharpie fine point version. Here we have the Lamy Scribble. This is a 0.7 millimeter mechanical pencil, and you can see that it has seven up top. It's got this torpedo style body, which is pretty neat, and it's got a retractable two millimeter sleeve. And of course the eraser is not very good. I mean, it's good enough. And it's also got this needle for clearing out lead jams. Typical Lamy minimalistic branding. And overall, it's a quite a comfortable pencil to hold. I use it mainly for writing quick notes or just doodling or scratch, chicken scratch writing, not necessarily for long periods of time. Here's a sort of regular ballpoint, but one that's I don't think sold in the States. This is the Stabilo Point Ball in 0.5. It's a run-of-the-mill ballpoint pen, plastic body. Grip is grippy enough, but I feel like over time this rubber would harden and then it wouldn't be grippy because there's no texture on it. Open it up to reveal a standard Parker-style refill, and no, not much else to say. It's a pretty nice pen. It writes smoothly, and it's very light to hold. Given its relatively large diameter, if you can see that, this is compared to a Parker Jotter, it's quite a bit more wide than the Jotter, and it doesn't taper as much, so it's more comfortable to hold over long periods of time. Definitely one I would recommend if you can get your hands on one. And why not go to the Parker Jotter next? This one is a 1980s Parker Jotter, and it was made in the USA. Parker. Made in USA. 
I actually found this pen in an auditorium once years back and it's quite well made. Just listen to that clicking mechanism. Open it up and you can see that it still had the brass threads. In later Parker Jotters they've replaced these with plastic threads. I have a gel refill in there now, 0.7 gel refill, and it's actually really smooth. I would highly recommend the Parker gel refills. And we can see the classic Parker emblem on the top there. Next up, we've got a pen that I really like. It's actually a marker, I guess. This is one of the first felt tip pens that ever came out to market. It's the Pentel Sign Pen. And I had one of these for six years or so, and given that I didn't use it all that much, it never dried up. Something that you see with cheaper markers is that they do dry up over time even if you don't use them, whereas the Pentel Sign Pen does not. It's made out of molded plastic. It's not high-end at all, actually. If you can see that branding there, it's pretty subtle. And I really do like that. It's got that sort of classic style. Made in Japan. Open it up, and it reveals a relatively thin marker point. Now this is thicker than your typical flare pen, so don't expect to use this for fine writing or essay writing or anything, but for doodling and for signing your name, which is one of the original purposes of this pen, it was used, supposed to be used as an autograph pen. It's great. It's just great. I love this. I love it so much that I actually got a whole box, and I'll uh, show that to you right now. All right, so here's the box of Pentel sign pens. As you can see, I mean, I just got this a couple weeks ago, and it's got the same style as though it just came straight out of the 60s. Right here, we got Sign Pen by Pentel, and it's got pretty minimal design. I mean, it, it tells you exactly what it is, so you can see it on a shelf. If it's in an office or something, you can say, oh, there's the sign pens, and that's the reordering number if I ever wanted to order more of them. And it's the same on both sides, so yeah, minimalistic packaging, but got a whole box of goodness in there. I'll probably live my whole life without drying up all of these pens. Next up, how about another marker? This is a Pilot Spotlighter Supreme. It's a highlighter and it's got liquid ink inside, which is quite cool to look at. And it means that this is very, very vibrant. I mean, I guess that's a little bit easier to see since my table is bright orange as well. But yeah, it's a nice highlighter made in Japan. And here we've got a space pen that I've had for quite a while. This is the NASA edition Capomatic by Fisher, and it is made in the USA as well. Open it up to reveal the classic Fisher space pen pressurized cartridge. This is the one that it came with, the PR4 black medium refill. And I guess it goes for $6 nowadays. I, have, I had an older one for a long time that said $5 on the refill. And it's plugged up here because it's pressurized nitrogen gas that forces the ink to the ball. And it is actually a clicker pen. You, a lot of people, when they first see this pen, would think that you just sort of twist it, but you'll break it if you do that. So just click it and there you go. This pen lived in my pocket for about three or four months. And here's another space pen, the final one. This is the Bullet Space Pen in matte black. And uh, this is actually my second ever space pen. I had a silver bullet for a very long time, and I lost it in my first two weeks of college. But I got this one to replace it, and I've had this one for a couple of years now. As you can see, it's still got all those threads. And this is a modern pen, not like that 80s Parker Jotter. So there you have the best of the Pen Cup 2016. I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, if you liked it, please do let me know in the comments. Let me know what you'd like to see next. And as always, thank you for watching. This has been Super V Power in another Writing Instruments video. See you next time. Till then.